So what is the whole, what is the big hoopla that we have about uh, C++? Like why they call it C++ 17, C++ 14, C++ 11, C++ 20. What is this thing? What is new versions of C++ actually refer to? What it refers to is that C++, as it got created, it was a language that's, that's, that was very powerful and they could do anything. It's, a, a, it's what we call the middle-level language, C and C++. These are middle-level language, which means, you know what is a high-level and a low-level language Remember from, what is ULI 101, whatever. A high-level language is close to our language, a low-level language close to, close to machine. And, and C and C++ plus is a middle-level language, which means you can go low or you can go high, whichever you want. This power that C++ gives you is troublesome because you may shoot yourself in the foot. And um, the problem with it was that dealing with different types and the way types were converted in, in language was un, not unpredictable. It was unpredictable difficult. Sometimes you are not sure what's happening behind this thing. You didn't know even know what type you are dealing with. And you were trying to do something with a type and it wouldn't work and you had no idea why. So they tried to come up with features to make the language more type safe. Which, like in old C++ language, uh, I remember when you overload between a uh, a long int and an integer, the compiler wouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't recognize between the two. Even a character and an integer. Yeah, character, yeah, but long integer and an integer it couldn't recognize because for it, it was all integers. Now it's getting more type safe, which means you not only can predict how the types are converted, but you can request how you want to convert them. And if it's not one, what you intended, it's not going to just do it. It's going to give you an error. OK? So that's what we call constraint types. With constraint types, what you do is you constraint typecasts. What, was, what is it? Typecast in C was like this. You had an integer. Sorry, the last time I actually wrote something on a board was 20 years ago. So if you see, you cannot read it. My apologies. So if I have an integer a over here that says it's 12, OK? And I want to put this thing in a double. What do you do? You create a double variable, right? d. And you say d is equal to a. What happens? It casts the integer to a double, right? If it was C language, essentially the compiler did this behind the scene. Wrote over here double and wrote A over here, which essentially casted the... So that casting means it temporarily changed it. Then we came to C++. We looked at classes that we created and we saw our classes have constructors. And the constructor of classes accept values, right? To build a class. We have a student class. S. And we know that the student is created using a student number, for example. So you could do something like this. Right? So essentially, I created the student S with the student number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We know that, right? Right? So essentially, that became casting in C++ con constructors with one argument, which means if I had a student, If I have a student, A, OK, whatever a student A is, OK, and I want it to cast an integer. So I have, if I have over here integer, N, O, set to 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 
I can say A is equal to an O with no overloading whatsoever. Why? Because the compiler does exactly what it did over here. The compiler says, at left I have a student, at right I have a number. Can I make a student out of a number? The answer is yes. Because student has a constructed or accepts a number. So essentially, what the compiler does behind the scene is A is set to student and O. Oh, exactly like this one. It casted the number, but casting in C++ happens like this. Remember I told you you can never call a constructor? If you call a constructor, you are not calling anything. You are creating a temporary nameless object instead. That is casting. To create a temporary nameless object out of another type, it means you are casting that type to the object. So in here is essentially, I'm creating a temporary nameless student out of the number, and I'm setting A to it. And because of that, now all the casts in C++ work that way. So you don't write double A like that. You actually put the parentheses around the A. You are saying create a temporary nameless double out of A and set the other double to that one. That's casting in C++. But these castings are not... Uh, that's, the thing is that when you write stuff like this, the casting is happening behind the scene. The casting can happen in many different ways. How do we cast things? I'm going to mention them to you right now. It's not going to make much sense because you don't have the 345 knowledge yet. When you go to OP 345, then everything becomes crystal clear that what these things are for. The castings that happen like this automatically, you can ask for them to be done that way. So, for example, in C, you could do this. Integer pointer P is equal 1, 2, 3, 4. What does that mean? It means P is a pointer of type integer. And it points to the address 1, 2, 3, 4. Essentially, P will hold 1, 2, 3, 4, which means if you count the bytes in your memory, at 1,234, there is an integer. And I am pointing at it. That was the case. You do that in C++, it won't allow you. It tells you, hey, this is an address. That's an integer. Are you sure you want to do that? This is type safety. The casting happens in C. But in C++, if you want this to happen, you have to manually tell to the compiler, hey, I want that cast to happen. Don't warn me. Don't bug me. I want that to happen. Therefore, less mistake happens. Therefore, people don't make mistakes think like they're actually setting a target of P to something. And then unexpected stuff happens. So you actually ask for it. These casts are in four categories, if I recall correctly. Constraint casts. The first one is static cast. So static cast cast things that are similar, related to each other. Okay? A double and an integer. They're both primitive values. You want to cast one to another, you do that. Hello. You actually brought a new one? <laughs> I thought you were changing the whole cluster. Okay. Oh, shoot. Not for us, huh? Still, we have to wait. Good thing it's the end of the semester. I don't have to. So it is shared. So let me show you. This is how the screen is set now. See? This is supposed to get over there. It's not. And it's connected. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. I think both
How did you do that? Tell me next time I don't call yeah. you. No, because um, one of the ports are actually dead. So like the laptop input. Is yeah, I put it on this one. It didn't work last time. Oh, yeah? I had to do like what I reset before I came here, actually. Oh, oh, you, oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. oh so that, that, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm good now. This what is what I'm, I want. I'm yeah. good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna take off uh, laptop option so that you can just see the okay. camera sure. and not change it. <laughs> so as you see over here in the example that we have in the thing, so I'm not gonna write this thing down because it's the same thing, right? You see over here this the the constraint type cast types are like this. That you are actually right what type of a cast you want. So this is the type of cast, so cast name. Okay? In here, you are writing what you want to cast it to. So you want to cast the character double. So in here goes a type. Okay? In here comes the object that you want to cast it. So static cast to an integer, this value. And you see it over here. So Essentially, in this example, it says we have double hours and integer minutes. We want to put the minutes in hours. If it was C, I would simply say hours is equal to minutes, right? Divided by 60 in this case, whatever. So, but I want the value of this minutes to change to a double. And these are related types, the types that... Uh, um, they're, they're essentially the same, okay? They're both primitive values. So there you can cast it like that. This is essentially means as if you take the static cast out and put a double behind minutes, like this one. So if I wanted to write this explicitly to mention that I want to change this integer to a double, I had to say D is set to static cast double and A. Potatoes, potatoes. But this one, if this is not a related type to double, it will fail. It will give you a compiler. It will tell you I can't do that. Okay? Types that have nothing to do with each other. You have an integer, you want to put it in a pointer. You have to reinterpret the type. Tell, hey, I know that it's awkward, it doesn't make sense, convert it anyway. Now, if you do that to relative stuff, it's going to fail. Tells you, hey, these two are almost the same. Why are you saying me that you want to reinterpret the thing? So, if in this case I am casting an integer to a pointer, Exactly as I mentioned it over there. So I want the x that has 2 going here, so p points to the second byte in memory. So I'm saying reinterpret cast to an integer pointer, that integer. If it was a double and an integer, that would have failed. It would have given you error, telling you, hey, you told me that these two things are not related. You're mistaken. You're designed something's fishy. Go check it out. Okay? Again, you tell your intent, in, intent and it's going to follow accordingly. Let's say, okay, I want to show you an example over here and you'll see exactly what, where we can use that one. So let's say I have over here, let me just bring it higher a little. So let's say in here I have, uh, let me just put over here. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, IO string. Okay, now take a look at this, please. Let's say I have a class. Printable. Okay. And this class of mine has an int that is number of prints. 
which essentially is going to keep track of how many times I have used the print function. How many times the printing had happened. By default, how do you write a print function? You write O stream reference print, right? O stream reference OSDR set to uh, C out, and then what? Const, right? Something over here. And let's say in here I have something that I want to, uh, I, and I'm going to make it a virtual. Okay, something like this. Okay? Now, in here, what I want to do, there, no. I'm not going to make it complicated. Let's make this one, I don't know, number. I'm printing a number, and this has m data, uh, double m data. I don't want to do complicated stuff. Okay? And I want to print that double thingy over there. But I want to know how many times I printed it. So in here I'm saying return OSDR M data, correct? That's how I print the data. Then I want to add to number of prints. So I'm going to say M number of prints plus plus. What is it going to tell me? Expression must be a modifiable value. Why? Because it's const. To in, in situations like this, I need to remove the constantness from parts and let the rest to remain constant. So what do I do? I'm going to create an integer, pointer, counter, and I'm going to say it's equal to const cast. You see that? Const cast integer pointer what? Address of m number of points. And then in here I'm going to say So I specifically am telling, hey, compiler, I know this function is constant, but still I want to change that value that is not constant. Make its address writable for me. And I remove the constantness out of it. That I could never do in old versions of C++. Here you can. So you're literally saying I'm casting it. Does that make sense? So it removes constantness. Because when I say it removes constantness, then everybody says, why did you make it constant at the first time? Because print is supposed to be constant by logic, but it needs to change few things, keep track of stuff. How do I do that? Ta-da. Okay, and it's only working on pointers. You cannot <laughs> remove constantness of a variable. You have to extract their addresses and convert it to whatever. Are we good with this? Again, it's very difficult. For, I cannot, when I, this is a college, you know what I mean? If it was university, I would tell you what it is and go find out how it works. That's the theory, okay? In college, we show you the use case, then we tell you why is this thing for, it's because of that, as I told you right now in the other one, okay? I could just tell you, it removed constantness, go. Now go find out why, okay? For this, you need three, four, five knowledge. Down, so, Downcasting is always possible. You know that. Like if I have a vehicle and I have a car, I can always look at the car as a vehicle, correct? But if you have a vehicle, can you cast it to a car? No, maybe it's a motorcycle. Right? You can. 
if you know for a fact that the pointer or reference you are looking for is actually a car. If I have a vehicle pointer, and I know for a fact, based on my logic, that this vehicle is pointing to a car, and I want to use the car features in the vehicle, I can't, because vehicle is the base pointer, I cannot access the car features. I can only access the virtual features, correct? For a fact, my logic dictates that at this point, my vehicle is pointing to a car. How do you do it? You do a dynamic cast to a car, the vehicle pointer. Therefore, it changes it to a vehicle. If that logic that you followed does not lead to a car, you get a compiler. error. And runtime error, sorry. So when it actually compiles, when it reaches to it, it it's not going to work out. It's going to crash or whatever. You have to make sure. So this is a dangerous thing to do, but yeah. Anyways. Now, read through this, this thing, this uh, uh, explanation that we have over here. The reason that this thing at the end of the semester kind of don't make sense to me is that, and I don't really have too much emphasis on it, because we teach you and I have no usage for you. <laughs> I'm not going to give you anything in a workshop or, or yeah, in the next workshop when it comes up, if you're supposed to do a cast, use, a, use a, a one of these casts for it, sure. But uh, I cannot create something to force you to use it. That's in 345. But just be, be aware of it, okay? Uh, maybe it would have been nice if I, if I added, added that one in the latest milestone of the project. Not now, but I'm, I'm thinking about next semester, but... Well, yeah, so just, just to use the constant cast and see if they can do it or not. Okay, so, so yeah, so that's, those are constraint casts. Are we okay with them? Okay, I might ask you, so just go through them and memorize them. It's going to be in concept questions. And I may ask you a question on the constantness. I'm going to just write, put a piece of code over there and say, okay, write a, a function over here. Uh, with this signature, and I'm going to tell you that it's going to be constant that modifies. I'll see if you can do a constant cast. That's, that's going to be the question, okay? So constant cast is the only thing that I can actually test you on. So that's the one that you need to learn how it works, okay? Write some piece of code and, and try it. And we have one week for review to all of these things. So if you couldn't do it yourself, the next day you're coming, you ask me, for that the constant cast that you told me, I don't know how to work with it. Then I'll show you, okay? Yes, 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 yes. So anything that you want to remove its constantness, you change the change its address to a right writable one. Now We have two major categories. Read these things. I'm, I'm making it. I'm making it in a. Uh, I'm, I'm explaining it in, as a whole to for you to see what they are. Okay, go read again and come with questions. Polymorphism is what? What does it mean? Polymorph? Something that is polymorph. Something that has different shapes. It can act in different ways. Right? That's a polymorphic object. Now, when we are trying to make a, an object polymorph, essentially we make it act differently in similar situations. We create virtual functions, we, do, uh, we create templates, we cast things, we overload functions. These are all polymorphic stuff. Why, why, we, why we say casting is polymorphic? Because you have, uh, you have a plus, right? You, you add a double and an integer, it works. You add an integer to an integer, it works. Did you overload the plus? No, it did it in C, right? These type of things that casts objects to make things work is a polymorphic thing. It has an integer, it casts it temporarily to a double so it works. So it changes its shape to work. We call that coercion, the first one. I call that fake. Ad hoc, Farda's language, I call it fake polymorphism. 
when you look at it closely, it's not polymorphism. It's just doing something so things can work. Okay? So casting is that one. It's ad hoc. Okay? Coercion. Casting. Overloading. You have done it. You write a function with the same name, different arguments. If I have a function, the name of the function is PRN with a better marker. Yeah, if I have a function and the name of, fu the, name of the function is PRN that accepts an integer and I have another function PRN that accepts a double, we call this it's overloaded and because they're both called PRN, it's polymorphic, right? I'm doing print in two different ways. It's not polymorphic at all. What the compiler does, did, after they wanted to do this, they said when programmer likes that, rename the function add and add the types to it. So you write PRN int, compiler renames it to PRN underline int, and then, and this one, compiler renames it to PRN underline double. They are not same function at all. They're two different functions with two different names. But they fake it, so we think it is. Overloading is the second one. It is polymorphic, definitely, when you look, come back and look. But when you look at it closely, you'll see, no, behind the scene, you are going to go good old C. What is not polymorphic is when you make something virtual. When you make something virtual, you are in the parent, you are writing the function. In a child, you are writing the exact same function with signature and everything, identical to the base. It's the decision of the compiler to call the latest version or not. Therefore, your virtual function really acts differently based on what type of a fun what type of an object, inherited object, is at hand at the moment. If you have a car and you say drive, you are driving a car. If you have a boat and you drive, you are driving a boat. They are both vehicles in different, but the derive for these two are working differently based on what the object is. So you say, I'm driving my vehicle. What is your vehicle? My vehicle is a boat. Therefore, I'm on the water. I'm driving my vehicle. What is your vehicle? My vehicle is a car. Therefore, you are going on a road. So the driving becomes different. That's actual polymorphism. It's not fake anymore. It is universal. Okay? And the final one is mother of all polymorphisms. Templates. You don't even have a function. Compiler looks at your function call, builds the function on the fly. Out of the logic you have written. So you provide the logic only, not the function. The compiler builds the function for you on the fly. Not only that, we haven't learned it, you can do the exact same thing with classes. You can create templates for classes. So you don't write the class. You write what the logic of the class is, and you ask the compiler to create this class as such. Poof, it gets created. So even the class doesn't exist. That's parametric polymorphism. And that's universal one, the fourth one. Done. So now we know what these things are. So when we are talking about different type of polymorphism, that's what it is. That's the, the right one that is universal. I call them real. The left one, I call them fake. Fake one is coercion, that is casting. Overloading, that is overloading. Universal, that is the real one. It has inclusion, that is virtuals. And parametric, that is templates. Done. I told you it's going to take five minutes. Yes. Override? Override is shadowing un unless it's virtual. Override is just an action. It has nothing to do with polymorphic. Yeah, an override is polymorphic if it overrides a virtual function. If you, if you override a virtual function, then it's virtuality. That's inclusion. When you just override, <laughs> it's information hiding. You're hiding the, the other logic completely. I don't know if that's even called... Uh, it has anything to do with virtuality. Right? It overrides. <laughs> Uh, 
an override, it's, let me tell you like this. Let me tell you like this. When it's override, no, no, no. Override is nothing. It's not, it's not polymorphic. If you don't make the derived function of a vehicle virtual, then a vehicle is always going to drive the same way. What is the polymorphic about that? <laughs> what is polymorphic? When it's always the same way, it's not polymorphic. It's a function you're calling. Only if it can change shapes based on different uh, scenarios, that automatically, with you, without your uh, uh, handling it, then that's polymorphism, which is virtual functions, not overriding. Okay? Because overriding can, like when you say it's overriding, you say, oh yeah, this is a, I don't know, uh, a document and it prints itself, and I have a PDF document that is print itself. If you don't make the general documents print virtual, and you call print, it's impossible for it to print a PDF. It can't. It's always a document printing. It has nothing to do with PDFs. You follow what I'm saying? But if you make it virtual, then based on what is sitting for a document, if it's an image, if it's a PDF, if it's an XML, if it's an HTML, it will print it in its own way. Therefore, print becomes multi-shape, therefore polymorphic, therefore inclusion. Are we okay? All right. That's it. I'm just going to...